Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. In this week's video, I'll be exploring the tangle Fengal. Before we begin, I'll show you how to draw the basic Fengal. It starts with a dot in the center and radiating out from that dot are a whole series of S shapes. There's a little bit of a gap there, so I might just add one more S. That's your basic fingle, and you can take this in so many different directions. I've been playing around with this tangle on all kinds of different shape paper, and this is approximately the size of a Phi tile. So I'm starting with the border. I've downloaded this Marcus Operandus 2 from the Zentangle website just to find that little sweet spot on the Phi tile which shows the golden ratio. So I'm, you could just eyeball it. So roughly find where that will land and put a dot. Instead of starting my Fengal shape right in the center, I'm using that little dot and drawing an oval shape, putting an aura around there and then filling that aura with some orbs. I'm going to fill in those areas around the orbs. Now I'm going to start those S shapes coming from the edge of my oval. So I'm going to go from one end to the other and evenly space out these S's. 
So you can see by putting that oval right over on one side, it's going to affect those little tentacles coming out so that the ones up one end are very short and the others are quite long and that will affect how our pattern looks. And you might notice that I'm also adding extra S shapes on this than I did on my basic fingle. Now go in and I'm actually using another slightly S shaped line to connect one top to the line before it. I'm going to draw a very narrow aura around each of those shapes. On my basic fengal it was quite a wide aura but this one is very fine so take your time, do it slowly and go all the way around that whole shape. By drawing auras we've sectioned off a lot of that area and we can now add other tangles. Now I could fill those areas with just one tangle but I've decided to put a very narrow vein right up the centre of each of those leaf shapes. You could add whatever tangle you like to this and if you don't want to add this little vein just fill it with whatever tangle you like. I've been playing with this tangle all week, so I've come up with all kinds of variations. Some good, <laughs> and some maybe not so good. I think the most important thing is to just play and see what you can come up with. On either side of those veins, I'm now just going to do a simple flux. So that it comes like little leaves sprouting out from that centre vein. And then colouring all the gaps. I'm going to do this same pattern on each of those leaf shapes. You could do different ones on every one if you liked and I do have an example of that and I'll show you at the end. So there it is all finished or almost finished. I'm just on my last leaf.
I'm going to create some more sections now by oaring around the edge of those leaf shapes and along that line of the border. So I've created lots of little spaces where I can add more tangles. If you like, you can leave the background completely blank. It's all up to you. Before I do any more tangling, I'm going to work on my gemstone. So I've chosen some blue Prismacolor pencils, white, powder blue, going up to a dark blue. Now the light enters a gemstone and comes through the other end. So I'm going to fill that area with my white pencil and from that radiating outwards, I'm going to start with my lighter blues until I finally work my way out to the darker blues. I'm not pressing terribly hard at this stage. I want to layer this up so I'm overlapping the colours a little bit, putting more colour at the top end than I do in the bottom. So have patience and build up your layers, gradually getting darker until finally right around the edge you've got that really dark blue and I might even come in with a black and right at the edge put, put some black in there too. Then I'm going to come back and do the same process gradually going over those layers until it becomes nice and thick. Use whatever materials you have on hand. If you have different coloured pencils, then use those. The colours don't really matter. You can choose whatever. As long as you have a graduation of light to dark. If you do use Prismacolor pencils or a really waxy soft pencil, you might find that they get a little bit of a wax bloom on the top. And... If you do that, I often just use a cotton tip or a Q-tip and um, just polish it off right at the end. It takes that waxy layer off and um, leaves a nice smooth effect. It even blends the pencils together a little bit as well. You could use watercolour pencils if you like too. I think the main thing is just keeping that little white area at the bottom and gradually getting darker. So no matter what materials you're using, you're going to have the same effect. So there I'll just blend that a little bit with my Q-tip, get rid of that excess wax. And now I'm using my very dark, darkest blue and drawing some little cracks in there. And I'll do a few more with my black pencil. Now using a white gel pen, add some highlights so do that down in that darkest section at the top it's the light reflecting off the top of the gem and you could add a couple more sparkles here and there if you like because my gemstone's blue i've selected a uniball eye micro blue pen you could also use Pigma coloured 
fine O1 markers as well. Again, use whatever you've got. And I've selected tipple as my tangle for these outside areas. So I'm going to fill them all in now and I'll come back to you in a moment. Now to add a little bit of shading. So I'm just putting some graphite along that edge where each of those leaf shapes overlap. Not a great deal, just to show that one overlaps the other. Now find your tortillon and go in and just soften up those lines. Finally, I'm going to put some graphite and shade around the edges of those sections in the background so that it looks like it sits back a little bit from my main pattern and soften them up with the tortillon. So now I'm finished, I'll try and add my initials. It's not really showing up very well in this pattern with the black. I might come back in with a white gel pen and brighten it up a little bit. I can see I might need a couple of coats of this, so I'll come back when this is all finished. And there it is, the finished results. And here are some others that I've been playing around with. Now on this bookmark I use the Tangle Elegan and that's by Tangle Dream and you can find that on her YouTube channel. And this one I use the Tangle Finery and that's a Zentangle pattern. As you can see on this one I've done a different tangle in each one of those leaf shapes. So from our basic Fengal We've created a few different fingles rotating around a gemstone. There's so many things you can do with this tangle, so please have a play around and see what you can come up with. I had a lot of fun anyway. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. I do post one every week. I recently had a little bit of a break, but back to every week, every Wednesday, there'll be a video. Thank you for watching and until next week, stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel or there are a couple of links here on the screen. And if you haven't already subscribed, the subscribe button is just below.